Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get right into the market analysis. We're going to look at, well, look at the tech sector, the individual FANG stocks. Those are kind of what's in play right now, just given that we're going through earnings season and the big market moving tech stocks are reporting earnings. So we have pretty much all the tech stocks out of the way now, except for Apple. So that's critical because obviously that's the largest company. It's the largest company in the, the stock exchange. I think maybe the world, maybe not. I think maybe uh, the Saudi or Ramco might be the largest, but big, big company and uh, market moving event on Apple earnings. So that's next uh, Thursday after the bell. And then we have the Fed coming out next Wednesday. So I want to talk on that. Uh, and how it relates to the charts. Triple Qs, guys. We've been range bound really for about a month now. March 31st, right here. This is really where, where I said, okay, this is likely the top of the market. And I think there's limited upside really from here. And so far, that's been accurate. Now, we haven't gone down, but we have not really gone up. And you can see here, over a month, we've hit this. We've just been in this big trading range. And that not, not a whole lot has changed from there. So I get a lot of comments on the bullish days, bullish comments basically, and I get a lot of comments bearish on the bearish days, but we don't have a definitive trend yet to follow. Um, we don't have a definitive way. Now, yes, the trend since the beginning of the year has been up. That does not guarantee that the trend is gonna continue to be up and we have negative divergences telling me that this trend has limited life left. Okay, so I'm not looking to, I'm not looking to chase a trend that's already been established with the uptrend. What I'm really looking for is to be, be positioned for the next trend. The divergences are telling me the next trend is down. Now that doesn't mean that today we can't pop up, next week we can't pop up, okay? I'm not talking about just a couple days price action. What I'm talking about is catching the next large move to the downside and being positioned for it with a nice position. So again, if let's say, and what I'm trying to talk through is, let's say we continue to kind of just barely make a new high next week out of this range. If we do that, let me go down to the hourly and we start to break to the upside up in this area, it's gonna be a breakout that's occurring right ahead of the Fed and right ahead of uh, Apple earnings. Are you gonna have large institutions taking big positions right ahead of two key events like that? No, from my perspective, that's just market makers running stops playing games and ultimately you're gonna have a decided move in the market after that stuff kind of clears out of the way. So that's it guys. And in, in, in fact, if I see the breakout, I would say there's a very high probability that a breakout ahead of the Fed with negative divergence on the daily chart has a very high uh, probability of failing. But again, it sucks in the bulls, you know, it sucks in people who say the trend is your friend and they won't exit a position you know, a lot of these bulls, they will not exit a position until there's a big move against their position. All right, that's when they exit. They panic sell after they're taking on losses. They won't exit when they have gains, all right? So you're gonna have bullish people talking bullish as the market goes up. I'm continuing to look for that large move. Triple Qs shows me, again, and I have a lot of people saying, oh, you've been bearish for weeks now. Yeah, well, I have, but the market hasn't done anything for weeks, guys. So. You know, when I get bearish on something, it doesn't mean that, okay, I'm now that I'm bearish, the market's just gonna go straight down. It just means that, okay, I wanna start getting positioned short for the move lower when it starts to show up. It doesn't mean it's gonna show up right away, okay? But we haven't really gone up either. So my position, although slightly underwater-ish, not, not by a, a whole lot, is, is within, you know, it's within a range that's acceptable for managing risk. Now, if we continue to power higher, and especially after the Fed and after Microsoft, and we continue to power higher, start getting daily closes, okay, that's gonna have to change my tune and I'm gonna have to look for areas to stop out at. But as of right now, no need to stop out. If I stopped out every single time we we're at the top end of the range, all right, that means I would've stopped out here, then it'd go down, I would've stopped out here, then it went down, and if I stop out here, you know, again, it just doesn't make sense to stop out at resistance. All right, so I'm gonna go short into the weekend on the triple Qs, uh, and we're gonna ride this thing into the Fed and Microsoft and see if these technicals actually play out. The chart tells me that we're going lower, guys. Let's look at the NASDAQ futures real quick. On the futures, 
Um, here, okay, so here's this lot of reactions right down here at this range right here. Lots of reactions, but we did obviously have some reactions up here and we had another one up here. So at this point, this lower range, you know, we're, we're kind of just chopping within there. The high point of the range is right up around here, 13303. You know, I don't know how they'll close the week. Maybe they'll pop it and kind of close a little bit higher. Again, any kind of breakout that I see that happens ahead of the Fed and ahead of Microsoft, likely going to get faded into. So not a breakout I'm, I want to take. And, you know, range bound still. So we'll just see how we, you know, how that plays out. We obviously, the, the big impulsive rally right here was obviously due to this false breakdown. We had a false breakdown, kind of a short term bear trap, and then it rallied up to the top of the range. That's fine. I mean, I am bearish and I am short, but I'm, I wasn't looking to just cover on a little dip like that. Again, guys, I'm looking for the next trend lower, the next leg down in a ongoing bear market. Now let's go to Apple because that's obviously coming up. Apple stock. Now I know a lot of people say, you know, Apple's bullish. It's, you know, it's great. You don't, I hear a lot of, you don't want to trade Apple. You want to just own it or something. Okay, here's the thing. Apple's in a bear market. Now, doesn't seem like it is because obviously since the lows here in January, it's been rallying, but that would be the same to say that here, okay, Apple here was at the lows and it rallied up to the trend line. Then that was followed by a drop of 30%. Okay, so again, I'm this trend line right here from the bear market, we are making a series of lower highs and lower lows. You've got a high, lower high, lower high, and as of right now, lower high. So again, if we just stop right here, Apple reports earnings, the market doesn't like it and it sells off, that will be another lower high and it will be a continuation of the bear market trend. Uh, again, I know a lot of people don't feel that it's bearish because we're not too far off the all time highs, but we are continuing to make lower highs. And again, if I just, I'm sure the bulls felt extremely bullish right in here too. All right, I'm sure they were extremely bullish chomping at the bit. I could go back and look at the comments on my videos. I'm sure a lot of bulls were sitting there saying, oh, it's bullish off to new all time new highs. And then that was followed by a 30% drop in Apple. So again, I don't see any change. I don't see anything different in this chart now than I did, you know, during these, the end of these bear market rallies. At the end of the bear market rally is typically when you have people most bullish, all right? Most, most people will be the most bullish at the end of a bear market rally. You need people bullish in order to set the stage for the selling to, to show up. So no change here, guys. Negative divergence on Apple, and it's likely not going to do a whole lot uh, into earnings uh, or, you know, before earnings. The main thing I'm looking at, this trend line right here, decently established trend line. Uh, I've got a couple reactions. There's another one right here, kind of covered up by my markings. We're above that now, all right? You can see we're kind of above that right now. That looks very, very suspicious to me. It looks like a, it looks like a bull trap. And here's why. We're breaking out above this long-term downtrend line right ahead, of, right ahead of earnings. No, no, that's not, you're not gonna have institutions saying, you know, hey, we're going off to all-time new highs. Who cares what, what Fed or Apple says next week? I'm buying Apple now. No, that's not how it's going to work. And on a Friday, uh, you know, end of the week. So again, I suspect this bearish rising wedge pattern, which has been in play for all of this rally, is going to uh, resolve to the downside. All right. And only time will tell if I'm right. Uh, and again, what happens over the net, you know, leading up till, you know, Monday, Tuesday, what happens around that time frame is not really that important. What really happened, what really matters is how does the market trade after after the Fed's out of the way and after Apple's out of the way, all right? And if you start to see breakdowns showing up after the fact, after those things have reported, that's likely the real deal move that we're likely going to get. And I, right now, I'm anticipating it's to the downside. Let's go and look at... Um, Amazon just reported and they reported yesterday after the bell. I got a lot of comments saying, oh, look, Amazon's up 10%. It's lights out. Everything's going up. Everything's bullish. And I've talked about that over and over. But here's the thing. Bulls are going to be bulls regardless of what you say. Uh, and, the, and, and the thing is, is that um, 
it doesn't, you know, what the, what what happens in the after hours is not usually that important. It's not as critical as what happens in the main regular trading session. The after hours are very thinly traded uh, and they are often just fa whippy false moves. And so Amazon was up, when I looked, it was up about 11 and a half percent in the after hours. Uh, I had people commenting, oh, look, it's up, you know, 15% in the last two days or whatever. And, you know, clearly everything's bullish. Within like two hours from that comment, Amazon was down by 2%, meaning it had dropped a total, uh, you know, from when I saw it, it had dropped about 14% um, or so from that after hours print. So yeah, I mean, is that bullish? Is it bullish to come out with a print and then drop 14%? No, I don't know about that. So as of today on Amazon, we are, uh, back below the 200 day moving average. So look, one day pop above the 200, back below it. Now the day's not over, we'll see. They're probably gonna close it right on the 200, I think, uh, but you know, I, I don't think it's gonna break out above the 200 uh, today, so we'll see. And you go back and look at this bear market rally and you can kind of see here, This we started the bear market rally in Amazon back in um, November of 2021. Uh, the rally, you know, we, we were or sorry, the, not the bear market. We started the bear market, not the bear market rally. But look, you, you pop above the 200. All right. There's a little rally, a couple days above the 200, just a couple back below and down she goes. This one, the next time you get above the 200, I got to kind of clean my chart up. Uh, look right there, intraday pop above the 200. Simple moving average, intraday failed, closed back right on the 200, down she goes. Okay, and then here, pop above the 200 day moving average. Again, it, you know, closing above the 200, very next day gap down and down she went. So again, why would I assume that this time is any different than the last four times until I see different technicals? Right now, I see technicals showing me that it's the same. So bulls obviously were bullish here, they got buried. Bulls were bullish there, they got buried. Bulls were bullish. There, they got buried and here we are again. I think we're going lower guys. Now, again, I'm not gonna, you know, as we, you know, as we approach the lows, start taking out the lows, start, you know, putting in some bullish divergences down here. That's when I start turning to the bearish side of things. All right, and you know, that's it. So I wanna point that out. Let's look at Google. Google's not really doing anything. I mean, it re earnings came out, I, they didn't do much. And ultimately this thing's just kinda treading water sideways. So. I don't see any change here on Google going back, you know, all, well over a month. Um, and there's no technical change there. And then uh, covered Apple already, Meta, some uh, Meta, Meta, Muda, whatever you want to call it. Um, they obviously had a good earnings report. They popped it above. We're at, sitting at some resistance right up here. There's this gap. Let me get my chart working. There's a gap right up there. It's about 244.87. We're pretty much traded right up to it and we're just sitting at that gap. So that's gap resistance. You enter the gap, yeah, you're probably gonna, you could go to fill the gap at 287, but we haven't entered the gap yet. We're holding, so we'll see how that, what that proves to be if that, right now it's at resistance. So it, it's, it's objective to short here. It's not objective to be long, um, you know, it's objective to short. We also had this bearish rising wedge pattern. We overshot to the uh, upside, but again, you see this start to come down. That's going to be a sell signal. And that's oftentimes what happens. You'll have a bearish pattern. They'll shoot it to the overside, run a bunch of stops, clear out all the stop, all the shorts, uh, suck in a bunch of bulls, kind of late to the party money, and then they'll flush it out. All right. So that's kind of what I'm thinking is going to happen in uh, this one. Uh, and I'm, I'm positioned for that as well. Uh, and then Microsoft. So Microsoft obviously had, you know, gapped up on earnings. Strong day yesterday and today. Not much, you know, kind of in the same spot as yesterday. Okay, so Microsoft is, um, the biggest thing is I've got this pattern here. It really shows cleanly on the weekly chart. Uh, on the weekly for Microsoft, this is the uptrend line. You can see I've got a reaction there, reaction there, reaction there several weeks of support there and then it broke and you had a big sell signal right there a big breakdown of that weekly trend line and then <clears throat> kind of a leg down and it, it it's really just ran up for a back test of that trend line so something to look for there 
on, uh, you know, do we get rejected right here at this weekly? We could trade here for maybe another week or, or you know, maybe another week, maybe even another two weeks. I don't see too much more upside uh, from where Microsoft is at. And in fact, it's objective to short on the weekly chart right here for a move, you know, starting for the next move lower. So we'll see how that plays out. Lots going to pivot on the Fed and Microsoft or on Apple next week. So I don't have a whole lot of change uh, on my perspective. We're just kind of in the middle of, uh, you know, middle of earnings. So um, that's it. Let's look at SOXX. So that hit support and I talked about that. Um, I had SMH, I didn't have SOXX because I, uh, <clears throat> I they, my broker didn't have any shares to borrow when I shorted it. But this was a profitable trade, guys. You know, we broke trend, all right, right here. Drifted, fell about, oh, 5% hit support on the daily. I pointed that out in the private member group and now we're rallying. So yeah, maybe we rally up to year 417, uh, but likely gonna roll over after that. And then the other one, AVGO was one I talked about yesterday. We fell to that gap fill right there. I covered my short trade right there and obviously they ramped it back up into the close. And so this thing's still range bound. So I, I think you know easily could head to the top of the range if it's gonna do it, it's probably gonna do it Monday and Tuesday next week before the Fed, uh, or maybe just slightly after the Fed, but we'll run up to the top of the range, 643.95, 644. And then from there, um, you know, likely uh, start to break down or maybe put in a slightly new high and then break down. <clears throat> we still have negative divergence on the daily. So it tells me whatever kind of high, if it's gonna put in one, we'll get sold into, it'll be a divergent high, so. Range bound there, no, you know, no change there. I'm not in it right now. I'm looking, you know, right now for me, the next sell signal is is you know either at resist, like I, I'd short it at resistance up here. Uh, that's probably what I'll look to do. Or if it wants to break, start to break down back below 615, then yeah, we're probably going to start to work our way lower. Lots going to pivot on the triple Qs. I mean, that's that's kind of the key uh, tech industry. Um, uh, index. So we'll watch that one. Okay, here's first solar. And again, breaking down with the sell signal. Now, this sell signal came on a big gap down. And yeah, I think that's how probably triple Q's is going to do it as well. Again, this is kind of the thing the trend is your friend, the trend is your friend, buy it support, here you go, buy it support, and gap down and now you're trapped. So um, you know, kind of trap that last money, the trend on this has been broken, it's now sell the rip. Uh, this one has had big negative divergence for quite a while. So uh, I suspect it's pretty oversold now. So, you know, I'd look to short it on a rally back into resistance. Uh, as of right now, you know, the trend line, I think they could probably try to rally. Oh, let's get rid of that one. Try to rally it back up to, uh, to the trend line. And then that would be resistance. So that's what I have on that. Guys, that's all I'm, I've got. I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up. If you're new and you're interested, uh, check out my Stock Market Technical Analysis course. Check out the private member group. Link in the description for both of those of this video. And then we're going to do a live stream tomorrow around 9.15 Pacific time in the morning. So ho hopefully I'll catch you guys on that one. All right. Take care. Bye.